one. Uh, good evening, Thomas. How are you? I got these bugs, man. I got these bugs. <laughs> you got those bugs, man. I tell you what, I've been, I just can't, I just can't get out of my brain that I need to find a small blue flower. And uh, <laughs> I think we're both, we need to find a new pathway. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, a new path. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, uh... Yeah. Hey guys, this is the uh, first to last in the nerddom, and uh, this is our weekly uh, main show. And to th this week, uh, we're going to be uh, patrolling um, the uh, the all-knowing surveillance state that is in uh, in the world of the Scanner Darkly universe, uh, yes. which was uh, based on a Philip K. Dick novel, uh, mm -hmm. and a little little bit of background from him. Like he uh, he had his very interesting background for this, but uh, and maybe yeah, we can go into it or not. But I'm not sure. But yeah, I you know this is one that I had seen uh, or talked heard uh, over the years, and like I'd seen kind of bits and pieces, but I never actually sat down through and like watched mm -hmm. all from start to finish until now. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'd heard things about you know like nothing like I've, I always heard it was kind of like a um, like a cult classic, I guess, kind of something mm -hmm. along those lines, like where it's just very beloved by the folks that that uh, know about it. And Keanu Reeves, I've uh, this is this is all uh, a very awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome a uh, wonderful mm -hmm. surprise to unwrap um and uh, i'm i'm looking forward to following up and uh jumping into some um phil k dick novels regardless because of this one mm -hmm. it's, it's just got to keep it going because it's just so fascinating um uh, yeah. but with that uh what made you want to pick and i believe this was your you recommended this one um what were your uh, thought process uh for for that for this week and what well, were um <laughs> well, I'd uh, seen it uh, back in the 2000s when it came out. Uh, I, I loved it at the time. Um, and then, uh, you know, when it came on DVD, uh, I picked up a copy. Uh, but I, I think I only had seen it a couple of times. Once in a theater, I went to, what's that theater in St. Louis down uh, the loop? Uh, the, the more artsy one. Um, the pat no, not the pageant. That's the, um, the place but there's a there's a there's like a little little uh, arts art arts theater there that shows like cool little independent movies and that's where i saw scanner darkly i believe and what then, was uh, the theater called again sorry uh it was uh in st louis in uh the loop was, uh that was, it one the, that's, was it the tivoli yeah tivoli okay tivoli, that's yep. it mm -hmm. yeah yeah <laughs> yep uh, yep yep i was introduced to that too when i uh um when i met friends and i, I became new to the st louis area um, uh -huh. they were very much into the, the, you know, the, this diff, watching different films kind of scene. Mm -hmm. And uh, they dragged me to quite a few films that I'm very glad that I got to see in the Tivoli. It was, a uh, yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. They yeah. had the, uh, yep. the, uh, uber expensive, uh, candy, like the Toblerones and all that, <laughs> <laughs> like the fancy pants kind of stuff. Uh, good yeah. 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 And, uh, yeah. So, um, those, those, uh, fellow viewers out there in St. Louis, uh, shout out to the Tivoli. Uh, on the loop uh yeah i have uh quite a few memorable movie experiences there uh they were always right. showing uh, some some cool stuff but yeah so um but yeah i was uh I, philip k dick was always uh in the back of my mind um i loved uh blade runner uh which is based off of uh do androids uh dream of sheep and uh right. i read that that book in high school um <laughs> and that was that was quite a bit of a head trip and uh, i've always been meaning to go back and read more philip k dick i know i picked up uh, the man in the high castle and I was playing on reading that a few times but uh yeah, that i was guess good. That i had was, read that yeah i was never i guess in the headspace to read it and i know amazon did a series on it and then there's been several movies like um total recall i believe and the minority report that's based off of philip k dick loosely <laughs> they may come into uh, big action movies and then uh i think the at the time uh his daughters uh and, and another gentleman were in control of his estate at the time of a scanner darkly and they were really hesitant about lending it back out to uh someone uh to make a movie and uh what the uh but the richard linkletter the writer director uh of the movie uh visited them and uh expressed what they what he wanted to do with it there were they were also hesitant about it being an animated movie because you immediately america thinks of disney uh so he had to calm some fears about that 
and uh but yeah and uh, i'm a huge richard Linklater uh fan i haven't seen all of his movies but i've seen a, a good majority of them and uh he came out about the time that uh kevin smith was and i, I would say he's a, a more literate uh kevin smith that has <laughs> that, that knows how to uh do uh dynamic camera angles and and uh actually um do some art artsy films <laughs> and uh because his first movie was uh, i that that was released in theaters was slacker and uh that one was i, I love that movie when it when it came out on dvd and uh that that and clerks was uh sort of my bibles as far as i you know at the time i, I wanted to be uh, <laughs> maybe like every other kid wanted to be a uh, movie director like like them and slacker is basically uh it follows it's it's set in i believe austin uh texas and so it it, it it's uh it's pretty much a snapshot of austin texas at the time it starts with a one person going along the street he starts talking to another person and then then we followed that person so it's sort of like you're going from person to person and you're seeing a kind of a snapshot. Each of them have a, uh, a discussion, uh, maybe uh, nonsensical, or maybe it's a, it's kind of a deep philosophical discussion. Uh, but you get a, like a slice of life, life of Austin. And uh, it's, it's a really cool movie, a uh, really neat idea. Uh, he's always trying to push, push the border of things. And that suburbia movie is also a, a really good one. Uh, but yeah, uh, so I was highly anticipating Scanner Darkly. You got Richard Linklater, you got Philip K. Dick, you have some gr great cast. Oh, yeah. And uh, you got a really cool uh, movie idea. Yeah, yeah, Philip K. Dick has has penned a lot, or uh, there's been a lot of movies that are in, in our generation's uh, mind's eye and even beyond uh, to, mm -hmm. to have extended out today. And we've certainly covered. Uh, Blade Runner, we both love that. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I don't think we've covered Minority Report, but that's a, I, I, I that's one I love to watch. Um, mm -hmm. Same for Total Recall and 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 the like. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like these the highlights here, I guess that they have. But yeah, uh, that's awesome. I didn't know that. I'm, see, now I'm gonna have to check out uh, <laughs> Slacker and see what yeah. what's what's what. Um, that's cool. Yeah. I so he basically is somebody that. Um, understands the technical aspect of camera work and kind of the theory behind it and why you would do it, that kind of thing. Whereas, like, Kevin Smith is, and I do not claim to have any background. As a matter of fact, I'm kind of mm -hmm. ignorant on his background, to be honest. Other than, like, yeah. my understanding is he's more like a kind of like a, a dude who just kind of fell into where he, mm -hmm. where he went and he he definitely has some talent and he used it and uh, and we we see that, but uh, up, up from under that, um, I'm not not too up on his background. But in any case, I do know. Yeah, I yeah. I, I agree with your comment the other day or or, uh, the, or last show. You said something in passing, like um, you know Kevin Smith's uh, kind of thing. Um, he's doing stuff now that like would have been relevant like ten years. It's like about ten years too late, like a decade right. too late, essentially. And right. I thought on agree with that completely. Right. Yeah, it's right. it's and not. It, yeah. Yeah, he kind of kind of dug in and, and spun his wheels, uh, and that could be uh, <laughs> due to his um, um, uh, his his uh, drug use. I know he's a, a very uh, loud advocate of marijuana. He's mm. uh, in the past ten or so years, he's been uh, uh, quite quite heavily into uh, uh, the uh, ganja, as they as they say. Uh, whereas. Uh, yeah, the devil's list. Uh, whereas uh, Richard Linkletter, he's always trying to do something different. He's always, and he's he's very uh, interested in how people talk and how they interact with each other. And like uh, his movie, I haven't seen it. Boyhood is actually a movie that he filmed over 10 years. It's sort of a 10 year uh, journey uh, with Ethan Hawke and uh, the the main actors in it, and it focuses on a, a boy growing up, and you actually see him grow up uh, through the ten years of that movie, uh, which really sounds. I, I again, I haven't seen it yet, but it really sounds like a, a fascinating movie. And he's done, you know, like pure comedy, like uh, Dazed and Confused, um, and he's uh, School of Rock. Uh, but yeah, he he knows how to switch between 
uh, really artsy, fascinating movies in going for going the opposite and doing like the crowd pleasing movie uh, that everybody's going to love to watch. <laughs> Right. Yeah. It seems like he, he, he has a good mix of, of this. Uh, well, I need to see more about him. This is what I love, why I love doing this uh, with you is be, to find out all these wonderful, uh, you know, future movies to watch. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, yeah. And sure. uh, from that list, he's going to do a untitled uh, Bill Hicks biopic, which um, I, um, Bill Hicks is my favorite uh, comedian of all time. So awesome. there you go. Uh, but yeah, so, but Richard Linklater, he's got, uh, well, he's from Austin, Texas. He's got that Southern, I guess, sort of mindset that, uh, you know, I'm always able to <laughs> click in and uh, relate to. Uh, and then uh, I know this, uh, this movie we're talking about, Scanner Darkly, takes place mm-hmm. both in, uh, they film it, filmed it both in Austin and California. Again, this is an animated movie. Uh, but you could tell from the animation, it's uh, highly detailed of the actors that are in it. And that's because they do rotoscoping. Right. Um, right. Yeah. And, uh, that, that, that's famous for that's how Disney did Snow White. That's how um, that's a, or a version of it uh, way, way, way back in the past. But this one mm-hmm. was fed through like a, I, I don't know what the thing is, but it's just some special self, uh, editing stuff. And it does all this thing. And. The, um, well, it's it, actually it's actually they, they do so do some CGI on it, but it's actually painstakingly painted on the frame. So they really? actually, oh, they're actually they have a, had a team of I think fifty artists, uh, and they were they were taking the uh, the uh, picture frame and uh, drawing it, drawing over right. it, <laughs> and then coloring over it and yeah it's it's um and that's basically what rotoscoping is is take it filming live footage um in the ralph basky he did that with the uh, lord of the rings animated movie back in the day uh, i right. had live live actors and then he would go back in and uh paint over that so you'd get that kind of realistic look to it and that's that's what they do did here and i think they they had planned for nine months uh, for the animation part of it, but ran into several different issues and ended up, ended up taking 18 months. But yeah, it's it's amazing wow. what they did uh, to get get that look, uh, the painted look. Yeah, now now you probably would not have would not do the movie the way they they did it back then. It would be all CGI and yeah, uh, you know they'd have the dots and you would map it and, <laughs> and create. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, yeah that, that, but they did, they actually used real film cameras when they filmed the scenes like live action, but mm-hmm. then they did, did this, mm-hmm. this treatment with road, and that's exactly how they would do it back, mm-hmm. way back when with the uh, artistry, like Snow White, et cetera. That mm-hmm. is very, uh, very cool form, but they use it in, in a, a way that I don't think has been done before. Um, uh-huh. And to kind of, it, 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 it very much is a uh, part of the story um, and, and you're mm-hmm. looking in on it um, because this movie has everything to do with whose point of view you're looking at it from. Mm-hmm. Um, and as you kind of see the different layers and you're kind of dealt in as it were uh, throughout the film. Yeah. But yeah, so like, it, it's, I like, like how, like where, if it's just like a still shot, it almost looks there, but then they mm-hmm. start moving around again. And then you're, you're kind of in this, <laughs> this hazy dreamy mm-hmm. kind of, quality of like yeah well I don't really know what the hell's going on except for like what we see right now <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and and yeah and there's a like one scene where the guy goes to the liquor store and he's going through all the racks of bottles and uh the racks kind of move independently of him and uh it's it's a really interesting effect um you know i in a a more realistic movie you'd probably be like oh well that that doesn't work at all but in this kind of flowing movie it it does work it kind of uh and and basically the this basic storyline is you have an undercover cop investigating a a drug ring and Mm -hmm. uh everybody's pretty much on drugs (laughs) right the whole the whole time so your perspective of what's going on is very much tainted by by the drugs uh for most of them if not all of the movie uh so that the in the animation uh does a really good job creating the effect of it being realistic but 
outerworldly at the same time, sort of a yeah. out of body, sort of uh, drug like. Um, uh, you know, we're we're both uh, very pure people. We don't have we're we're just guessing what it's like to be to be on drugs, but um, but yeah, they do a really good job of get, getting you off, kind of throwing you off. Uh, to where your your perspective of things is kind of off kilter so that you get that sort of trippy what the hell's going on right uh, in, that, in that 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 un you that unbalanced kind of feeling of like uh you know uh yeah. they do it very well and yeah the, you're absolutely right yeah one of the scenes too that speak well, while you're uh jog my memory like when he's at some point, and then I believe this storyline, because I did do a little bit of research, because I was like, oh, Phil K. Dick, and I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, and then I was like, oh, yeah, I read that, I read that, you know, kind of like, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. that's that's the feeling, but, like, he, um, he, uh, like, he had a situation in his life happen, and he had been living in his own house, and um, he kind of went off the, uh, he, he was on under methamphetamines, or, I believe, and he essentially decided to, um, like his kind of life fell apart. Uh, and it, it, as it, as he was rebuilding or just existing, uh, he opened up his house to be like more of a communal living type situation. Mm -hmm. So some of the characters that we see, like with this particular character, like that is this is, is roughly ripped from his life. I mean, obviously mm -hmm. it's story elements around it, but mm -hmm. it's very interesting because you see like a and you don't know if it's a real true flashback if it really happened right, or, if, right. or if it's just like a, a implanted memory or something but essentially mm -hmm. like the house that they're in like there's like one part like where he kind of like walks through it and he he you see like what it you see two different worlds in that house mm -hmm. uh and yeah. what they what they are and what they were maybe or what they mm -hmm. never were <laughs> right you yeah you, you know. never know you never know what's real and what's not and right just like uh, the liquor the, store scene right yeah, like you were saying yeah and with the the psychologists that were testing him at one point there's the left and the right side of the brain trying to figure mm -hmm. out and that's that's what's cool about it is that with that with it taking place all in that same house both maybe his maybe his past um uh and then his current day that's sort of like the left and right side brain of uh, of him and in his previous life it was very much ordered he knew what was going to happen whereas he and he he traded that in for this life that was um you know every every minute something else something weird could happen um your friend could bring home a, a 18 speed bike <laughs> that he bought for 50 bucks and then you could have a very long and interesting conversation about what speed actually is it and how much is it worth <laughs> <laughs> right right yeah yeah I, uh and in the, about the there are certain tent poles that are true throughout there are mile markers kind of thing that 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 uh revolve that the movie kind of gravitates around and through like he is definitely a cop you know mm -hmm. he is yep. this there's a these different personalities that he has and like you see how they're trying to infiltrate this to stop it essentially mm -hmm. and then i won't give too many spoilers because it's like you know a, a you know 18 year old movie or whatever you know whatever it is <laughs> at 17 right. 15 whatever it is um but in, in any case, um, I, I enjoy this a lot. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. It's, um, I, I had a weird um, thought about it, and I, I, I kept seeing it as a very dark version of the, the Big Lebowski. It just kind of mm. kept coming back to me. The good sort, of, sort of parallels. It's a, um, even though it, it's dealing with cops, it, it's sort of like aimless people doing aimless things, right. and the uh, and the Robert Downey Jr. character very much reminded me of uh, the John Goodman character <laughs> in that movie. Very uh, awesome. sort of awesome. sort of patriotic and wanted to be a cop, but right. <laughs> is so far gone that that right. you, you don't want him to be a cop. <laughs> no, right? Yeah, he's, he's he's just so much of a like. A, very dynamic individual for sure like that and then you know ed, ed harris as well like 
I, it, it's surprising. Like this is definitely a classic for sure with Counter Reeves. Like just the folks that were in it, um, they did yeah. a very good job. Um, yeah, and they obviously took a, a huge pay cut to to do this movie because they they wanted to do it. And right. uh, I think they they he didn't have to convince he. Uh, Richard Linklater was a little worried about getting Keanu because he didn't know if Keanu would want to do another sci-fi movie right after him completing the Matrix trilogy. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think Keanu done quite quite quickly, and then Robert Downey Jr. was uh, impressed that Keanu was doing it, so he wanted to do it. And I, I that probably after after Robert Downey, I'm sure everybody else was like, "Oh yeah, yeah, sure." <laughs> I, I said I said Ed Harris. I said I meant Woody Harrelson. I I said Ed Harris yeah. for some reason. I have uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, married with children on the brain for for some reason. Anyway, uh, correction there. <laughs> yeah and then uh Winona Ryder I'm not always impressed by her but I really enjoyed her in this role uh she did a, a great job and then uh that Rory sure. Cochran was was <laughs> very very interesting and animated his, his oh, the God. beginning scene with the bugs was <laughs> quite quite and um they all I watched a, a few interviews and they all said that they went a little bit more animated than they normally would because it's an animated movie uh, and right. then some really expressive faces and gestures and, and whatnot. And uh, it really, really pays off in the movie. It gives you, again, that, that uh, outer-worldly uh, kind of uh, look and feel. Uh, it, it's like, okay, well, this is like a, it's not really a normal person we're dealing with here. <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. and what's, what exactly is going on? Uh, and uh, it's, it's one of those movies that, I think a lot of animated stuff I dislike having famous people talking because you're very distracted oh well this is this is so and so this this is Will Smith obviously uh talking for this genie you know and so it gets it gets kind of um you 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 kind of get pulled out of it and don't really notice the characters you're noticing the actors Whereas I think in this movie, it works really well that you know and are familiar with the actors because the world is so strange and it is. Uh, so, uh, so are our worldly. And so those actors are your anchors into the world and makes you want to know about uh, the world. Uh, in our, and it's also a very interesting world. It's very uh, well built. Um, you wouldn't probably normally think of this as having good world building but i, I would say it does it's uh, oh, definitely it, it, it absolutely does i mean the the fact that they're the the method that you are being introduced to this world in the way that you're seeing it is a point in and of itself like that that is a character essentially as you go through the mm -hmm. the, the movie uh, you, you the storyline of bob who is bob what is going on with bob um why is uh you know donna so <laughs> very uh it tries to come across that this is also definitely like uh the the spider web and the interconnections between personalities and people from mm -hmm. obviously from different points of view but it's just it 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 it, it, it always kind of reminded me of like fractional uh like this the animation style like we're getting a fraction of things like we're not we're so jumbled up we're only seeing like some kind of far away aspect of it that we it kind of sort of is blurry it's kind of sort of yeah. <laughs> out of sorts it, it makes us it makes the viewer never sure from one moment to the next you know aside from you know the main you know the, the mainstream that we're on yeah. you know as we yeah. roll through it and we see yeah the, yeah you, you this never deeper deeper this very insidious you know aspect of like what drugs happen and do to you and and how that mm -hmm can break a person down to, you know, mm -hmm. these to right. not even knowing the individual self is dissolved into an ocean of <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not to get too too deep in, in into the into the line, but that's really yeah. your, where you're thrust into into the middle of all this, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's there's <laughs> several layers uh to the movie in that you could uh, I I think um my original take on the movie was probably pretty pretty state straightforward, but on this this viewing of it kept seeing the the various levels and and uh going off and mentally in different tangents uh while i was watching it because it, it kind of encourages you to explore uh the the various 
themes in, in the movie. And uh, I know um, a lot of movies, you're very passive when you're watching it. Obviously, when you're watching a, a big action movie, you're watching the spectacle, you're setting back, having a beer, maybe and watching all of it kind of transpires. And, and afterward, uh, you're, you're pretty happy about it if it's a good action movie and uh, you, you, you kind of leave it to the side. Whereas right. uh, this, this movie is very interactive. Uh, if you're if you're willing to go that far it's very interactive in that you can explore um some maybe thoughts that you've had at times uh with in the what's going on with the movie and kind of invest uh as much as you want into it and and you get uh more out uh when you're when you're doing doing something like that uh with this movie it's i would i'd be hard pressed to just watch this passively as just a sci-fi action movie because <laughs> there's very little action but uh, but uh and, and uh, not a whole lot of sci-fi either um and that that kind of works uh to its benefit in that is it's very much a a personal headspace kind of kind of movie absolutely yeah it, it just it it, it... I, I, again, like the, these these ones that take place in in the psyche um, in that mm-hmm. sphere, um, and like oh, I love that stuff, especially ones that like there's just like this residue or 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 so, and it could be the whole thing. It could be a couple scenes that just kind of sit in your brain, and you're like, oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Why did that happen? Right. Why did she do that? Why did he do that? Like what? Like, mm-hmm. like, damn, that was cold, or, or like certain aspects mm-hmm. of this, like, essentially, like, um, um, I don't know how to put this any other way, but pretty graphic, but mm-hmm. essentially, like, this is a meat grinder, and these are the, uh, and this is the human, and and, and this is the, the meat yeah. actor, <laughs> like, yeah, man, I hate to say that, but uh, uh-huh. it's, it's it's what it is. It, it just, uh-huh. yeah, it, it still, it's it very, still very, sticks it, with you, mm-hmm. and I think the overall theme of the movie is paranoia there's there's layers upon layers with him with his character being uh and also uh you know the the keanu character has three different names in the movie he says three three different personalities in the movie as and, you go through uh, you it, find out uh-huh. one after the other like oh mm-hmm. shoot, i didn't know that well now i do <laughs> Yeah, and he's an undercover cop that's in right. what was uh, what was the suits called? I forget. Um, the what? Sorry, uh, the the suits that the undercover cops wear when they're I, interacting with each other. I, I forget. I can't. I, I just know the scanner. Mm-hmm. The scanner can yeah. can show you like what you want to see. Like, and then the level right. of um of surveillance is so pervasive. Mm-hmm. They know who is talking. They and then they can pick that. This is very dystopian, very authoritarian statist kind of thing like where mm. this drug ha- and again this is like a very non-generic drug or whatever like to to yeah. to to do it and i believe that the novel is written that way as well um so yeah. that it's not just like one specific drug it's kind of like an amalgamation of all of them and what happened mm. but it's just so prevalent it it's 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 been catastrophic for their society um to the point yeah. to like where they had to have this this heavy handed <laughs> like <laughs> like basically like you you are you find out that bob is a mere um uh it, it, he is uh he is literally a pawn uh he is literally like the meat for the for the meat grinder <laughs> and they have to like put him through this thing to like get him in a state to like where he consciously does not know and understand truly what is going on and why he's doing what he's doing um beyond like being programmed um and that's very yeah. oh jesus yeah. god uh, that's like that's very yeah. scary <laughs> so, so yeah. although yeah you're right yeah there is like this very paranoid view of life in in the world and everything else it's justified <laughs> whether mm-hmm. you're what from whatever right. lens that you're looking at it whether it's from mm-hmm. the state or whatever um to to mm-hmm. the, the the evil corp that has made this thing happen and become yep. a thing to you right. know just to, mm-hmm. everybody else is just kind of like i, I don't know <laughs> yeah and uh, like the uh, old saying goes just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not after you <laughs> and uh, it, it's, it definitely it definitely puts a uh, an aspect on a, of but it's mm-hmm. 
yeah and the way we're talking if you haven't seen the movie yet it, it's it sounds really dark and uh very head trippy but then there's things like with keanu robert down jr and woody harrelson just being <laughs> their characters and that's very very entertaining there's a scene oh yeah uh, where they're uh, driving and, and they're they're having conversations uh, like uh, three drugged out guys would and the like the very very, very absurd very, slice yeah. of life type interactions that you're dealt into in this world and like what it's like yeah right keep going sorry <laughs> right yeah and and if it was and if it was just a movie about those three drugged out characters going throughout their life that would have been highly entertaining uh very interesting and um it would have been been worth probably watching a, a whole movie of uh but it, those those scenes are integrated into a bigger movie that's about uh paranoia and uh drugs and um how you could lose yourself uh, very much so and, and not not even know who you are uh, even when you're looking at yourself uh, and be confused and and not know um where 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 your head space is at and um but yeah and then you would think that a movie like that that could do like very funny scenes uh but then also get very trippy uh would be a very schizophrenic disjointed movie it's not it's very much no, uh no, very much no. one piece yeah this is not like that at all like that's a different aspect and take on like where it's very jarring and you are forcibly pushed into different mental spaces for other mm -hmm. movies like what we've seen before in the past and ones that we've mm -hmm. covered for sure but mm -hmm. this one is not like that at all it, it is it, it has lighter moments um it has life um you know mm -hmm. moments but they're they're essentially like where somebody went into bob and and pulled all his his mental personality everything out and then kind of restuffed it in <laughs> in a certain <laughs> kind of way I don't know yeah. how all the other put it than that, um, mm -hmm. but and then like when they were putting it back, when they're putting it back together, I guess um, they did it in a way that um, it basically it destroyed his center, like as person, as people mm -hmm. and, and human beings, like we have like a center point or a touchstone or whatever you want to call it, you know, like normal people, mm -hmm. like you have a certain kind of okay and then that's kind of the the tagline is everything is not going to be okay <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> where the yeah. darkness that that's a very jarring um mm -hmm. that's a very jarring um and, and a hard concept to push to the audience for them uh -huh. to accept you know like, yeah like and but this movie does it perfectly um if mm -hmm. you're open to it you know and you're not yeah I, I don't know how i would be ever put off by this honestly it's just so fascinating mm -hmm. um it's not yeah. boring it doesn't drag everything is very no. it, it's perfectly paced um you know the donna yeah. character is is this you know this force uh of nature <laughs> essentially that is uh -huh. basically you know the moon to uh yeah she's sort of like the yeah she's sort of like the um archetypal woman figure in in these guys lives uh and each man kind of sees her in a in a different light where you know mm -hmm. bob has a uh romantic uh kind of relationship with her and there's are there are really good scenes about relationships uh between them uh that feel very real this this whole movie even though it's uh, about drugs and uh being very <laughs> unreal at times it feels you know not real everything everything clicks and everything makes sense in this world and uh, right. there's there's movies especially sci-fi movies that you'll watch that's like okay well i i guess I'll, I'll, I'll forgive this because it's a good story but this this doesn't really make sense to me uh, right. whereas everything kind of makes sense to me in in, the, in this movie uh it all all works for me and I, I love that it starts out um saying it's takes place seven years in from now <laughs> right and and so that that's always going to be uh sort of uh where in you know a lot of movies get dated because they get it in a, a certain time frame in the future whereas this movie you know <laughs> it it's seven years in the future <laughs> right right yeah it, it it's it, it there is that aspect but they don't dwell on it again this is no, like yeah. the, really the great really good sci-fi um and and there's different ways that you can do this some are very technocratic and you know you have this 
and it's techno babble on one side, but uh, others are like, it ha that has that almost doesn't even matter. And it's not about that. It's about the it's about the characters and story and the and the the part uh, of the history that they're in. I don't know whatever. I don't want to get too grandiose about this, but um, that's we see this world and it. Uh, I think that um, I don't know that I would ever want to see another kind of like a sequel or prequel to this. I think it's perfect oh, the yeah. way it is, um, yeah. and I think that like it's that's the way it's supposed to be. Like you're kind of left mm -hmm. with this. Dang, yeah. <laughs> like yeah, what else and, happened, you know? And that's wonderful. That's called imagination, <laughs> right? And if you're feeling like you kind of want a little bit more of this animation, Richard Linklater did do uh, a movie before this called A Waking Life, which is also animated, and it's it's um it's it's a little head trippy. It goes into uh, philosophy of life and various things, uh, but it's much more brighter and uh, much more. Uh, of a, a more inspiring uh, movie. So it's sort of like a, a interesting, I guess, yin the yang wow. of, of this movie. And uh, it's, um, it has a, a assortment of, uh, of uh, actors as well. Uh, like I think Ethan Hawke is in it. And, uh, but yeah, it's, um, it, it's, it's a, and it's uh, a little bit more less grounded in reality because it's dealing with uh um, life, philosophy, and dreams, and, and uh, there's a lot of philosophical discussions in the movie um, okay. that that's very very interesting. Uh, but yeah, if you're if you're left with wanting more uh, from Scanner Darkly, this would be a a good one to uh, kind of you know <laughs> set it with. Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, I was gonna say like. Um... Uh, well, no, it's a different thing, but uh, completely unrelated. I, I thought there was a hook there, but there's not when I think about it. Uh, that's cool. Like, I have not I've not seen this one. Have you seen this one? Yeah. Yeah, it's, okay, it's cool. Cool. It's very good. Do you recommend it, obviously? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I think in this one and then also in uh, a Scanner Darkly, uh, with Scanner Darkly, it deals with conspiracy and uh, weird weird paranoia and whatnot. Did you notice a, uh, a cameo in a scanner darkly um there's a uh a street street junkie or street preacher that's uh out yelling in the streets uh it's uh -huh. alex jones um <laughs> are you serious yes yes the guy really? guy yelling out and uh <laughs> yelling at the police out in the street is uh that's is alex, crazy is alex jones uh street younger. prophet interesting yeah, street prophet yeah that's crazy that's uh -huh. i did not know that that's funny <laughs> that's funny yeah well, yeah and uh, uh and i didn't didn't really i i had no clue who alex jones was in, um you know 2006 when i oh, originally saw it but no, uh, <laughs> but, you, but yeah back then um the, it was michael moore that was like the uh that was the uh, premier personality that had a very sharp edgy opinion on on the, on the political side um as it were but yeah uh, with uh with richard linklater being uh, I um uh, you know heavily into I guess Austin Texas and the the various personalities so. there that it makes sense that he would <laughs> he would know and and would would put him in in the movie uh but yeah so I think he's he's also in a, a waking life too in a a small role uh but yeah the um <laughs> but yeah when I was reading through the Wikipedia on uh, Skinner Darkly I noticed that so when I was watching it I was looking yeah, for for that particular scene. <laughs> yeah, so essentially he's like this guy that's like kind of, uh, um, what do they call them? The um, um, uh, town crier or whatever. The uh, the the guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. yeah. And that, actually, now that I see his name in uh, Waking Life, I remember it because he's driving his car with a, a loud uh, speaker oh, <laughs> spouting okay. spouting his <laughs> what he's talking about you know right right uh, much much like the uh, street prophet was uh, yelling out on the streets <laughs> in uh, scanner darkly uh, uh, but yeah sometimes uh sometimes uh art imitates life and sometimes life does imitate art <laughs> like <laughs> definitely. definitely i don't think his role has changed too much from <laughs> no, uh, no definitely <laughs> definitely it's about uh it's about shouting loud things um <laughs> yeah yeah no i think uh, that's one of the things i think i like about richard linklater 
uh, like with Slackers, with uh, his various movies, especially the ones that deal with uh, multiple people and multiple philosophies. And you, he, he, you could tell he's never judging. Uh, there's ne- never like a, a moral, uh, over overarching moral uh, lens that's being looked at. It's basically putting a camera on on various people, letting them talk and uh, letting you experience their world in their their words and uh, just just seeing who who they are and then uh, drawing your own conclusions from it uh, he's very much uh that kind of um i guess fly on the wall kind of kind of director and he's, of he's not one of those that that uh tells you how to feel which which works very well with scary darkly because you could you you get what you put into that movie you absolutely do you absolutely do you th- there's just so many so many aspects that you could come at it from and and deconstruct it if you were so so inclined um that's not what we do per se but we what we do from the nerd point of view and from the appreciation point of view. <laughs> but yeah. um um yeah it's it's very <laughs> it's i this one was something like i yeah. i'm glad and I, I, uh, I, I think it was worth seeing yeah, I think uh, Woody Harrelson's hair uh, needs its own credit <laughs> in this right. movie. It's very, very interactive as well. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody has that. They definitely have, like, there's a certain kind of scene mm-hmm. that is in their universe that those gentlemen um, are uh, representing for sure. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I watched... Mm-hmm. Go ahead. <laughs> substance, substance D yeah. <laughs> drug, you know, it's just like this thing, like that. But you accept mm-hmm. it, you know, you don't, it's not mm-hmm. kitschy or, or out of place. And then, yeah. Right. Right. And then the, the, the scene where, that you've got pulled up, there's a character that uh, decides uh, to uh, commit suicide. And um, it's done humorously, but darkly. Uh, in it doesn't treat it lightly, but uh, it doesn't, uh, doesn't uh, look away from the, the humor of the, the situation as well. And uh, that's, that's probably um, I would almost say like I, I haven't read Scanner Darkly, but I would think that those would be a hallmark to to the book um, that Philip K. Dick wrote. Mm-hmm. That he has a very a keen he has a, a very keen sense of of the dark, uh, the light, and the humor in in uh, any given situation. Yeah, and 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 th- these were events that were that happened to him in his life that yep. loosely influenced this yeah. the, the the novel and then later on this movie. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, and, uh, and I don't know if it's um, it looks like at the end and not no spoilers. This is just a, a footnote that's at the end of the movie uh, where uh, there's a list of all the people that ha- that this person has um, seen die in uh in how they 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 expired uh through various drugs or whatnot and at the end you see that's philip k dick and i i assume that that's the footnote uh or uh the appendix you know uh footnote at the end of um a scanner darkly and uh you you can tell from the whole list of people that he he has known and who has died uh somewhat tragically uh that that, <laughs> that this this was a, a heavily led life you know <laughs> Oh yeah, and, and very much rooted in reality. Um, that mm-hmm. Not not all obviously not all the, the sci-fi aspects of it, but mm-hmm. um, that that's why he wrote it to be like this drug that was just you know the generic drug essentially like mm-hmm. catch-all you know this that has the amalgamation of different paranoia and disassociation, um, not knowing front to back, um, kind of just literally, literally we we find Bob um, a many t- many many times just in the moment. And he kind of just rolls with whatever's going on, um, mm-hmm. essentially. Um, and that's due to manipulation and some other cruder aspects to uh, mm-hmm. manufacture him in yep. the state that he he mm-hmm. became, or that we we find him in, and mm-hmm. then later on, toward the, all the way to the very end. <laughs> like, it, yeah. Unfortunately, um, you're right. It is very dark. Um, it does not. This is not a. Like the the really good old classic Disney films had some kind of like a, a a very moral kind of very counterbalance going on. Some kind of tragedy or flaw happened that was very that was like a big rock that dammed up the river and then the river kind of flows around and that's where it, that's we see that that's 
you know, the, the case here as well. You know, there's <laughs> Bambi's mother in fact does die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And even worse, we're not even sure that the 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 that we're not even sure that that um that Bob ever had control ever in any way in, in the whole grand scheme of things. Like he was just right one of three, if not more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's um even if you're on the counterculture side of the of being in in the drug and, and being in that world or on the flip side on the law enforcement side there's there's sort of like this very much a, a gray area and there's this manipulation uh from both sides um influencing each other that is very um symbiotic and uh damaging uh to both sides and it's, it's very interesting um how how they, they kind of balanced it out and and again it there's that 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 yin yang that that left hemisphere right hemisphere <laughs> sort of uh duality uh that's throughout the whole movie you could um pull that pull that from um through uh, throughout the movie um there's that sense of uh opposing sides trying to uh find the balance between the two and and not being able to yeah absolutely yeah it, it just is it's really good <laughs> <laughs> yeah only enjoyed it and and there like i said i i don't this would not ever work outside of this one thing um you know other than like uh maybe a novel or something but not really yeah. it's never gonna happen because phil k dick is dead and, and nobody's mm -hmm. screwing with that um thankfully <laughs> <laughs> but th th that's why it's like i like how it's just outside the mainstream enough mm -hmm. um to like kind of sit there on the periphery and that that's essentially how it came out uh, yeah, my my understanding is um, I never mm -hmm. saw it in the theater, but then again, mm -hmm. uh, I'm kind of jealous that you you got to. But uh, <laughs> like that, it would be an interesting uh, experience. Yeah, this is yeah. A, this go watch this. This is very good. Um, mm -hmm. If you're yeah. into that, just like we are, like uh, a different kind of. It's not schizophrenic. I wouldn't say like yeah. there's some commenter down here that said it was like schizophrenic or whatever. I don't think yeah, so. No. Um, no it's not like that at all like schizophrenic to me would mean very jarring very mm -hmm. oh, oh, in one section all of a sudden it skips over here um like and i think that there are movies that do that very well mm -hmm. um but they're they're a completely different harder edge kind of thing um mm -hmm. and although this has its hard points it's still kind of um you, you don't actually get to look at anything too clearly and that's kind of like that that it's like a, it's like you take your glasses it's like somebody took your glasses you wear glasses like me and it's like somebody mm -hmm. had greasy hands or something <laughs> like greasy fingerprints all over your glasses and that's how you're seeing the world only you're also on drugs <laughs> <laughs> so you're yeah. you're seeing something there and what you're mm -hmm. seeing is what you're seeing but it's different it's it's right yeah it's that's... against you <laughs> and, and to to its benefit it's not a movie for everybody uh mm -hmm. and that's uh, I, I, those are those tend to be the movies I love that that are kind of polarizing to a certain certain audience. The ones that that don't want uh, they want they want their their Marvel big action movie and and they're happy with just watching it with some popcorn or a beer and and having fun with it and then then that's all that's all they they want to get out of it and that's fine. Uh, that's mm -hmm. that's if that's your entertainment and that's as far as you want to go with something. Uh, that's that's cool but yeah if you want to dig in a little deeper and uh, get into an interesting headspace uh, that that the movie allows you to get into uh, there's there's that too there's it's very well put together I can't say um, technically or, or, or um, plot wise I can't find anything uh, that doesn't doesn't work uh, it it does it has it plays at a, a various levels at times it, it plays like a comedy uh, at times it's it's much like a a film noir kind of movie where um, there's a mystery that mm -hmm. that needs, needs to be solved uh but it, it's but nowhere in any of the scenes there's a rush to get to the end uh it's very uh very much you're experiencing it through keanu reeves character bob in the sense that you're just going from see the scene and you're taking in exactly what, what what the characters that you're interacting with are giving you and I, I someone could see it as schizophrenic
think if they're if they're trying to understand it and trying to get the end to the end of the movie and trying to under um you know to force a, an understanding on it um you're going to be very frustrated with the movie but if you yeah. if you go on go on the journey with Keanu and and don't worry about where it's taking you and you right. just go along with the ride I and agree see, it, see it see it through his eyes and and you know and at times you need to step back from his eyes and like oh <laughs> what, what, what's going what's what's right. going on what, here for, what, for what him really going, yeah. yeah you can't you can't fast forward through this at all um this is no. not where you have to you have to that's the the time and the progression of mm -hmm. the story is is the mm -hmm. character like i said before in and of itself um, yeah you, yeah you if, you're, if you're watching a movie like this you know uh, okay yeah, yeah yeah if you're on your phone no watching it, it that's that that just doesn't work <laughs> no you're gonna you're gonna miss too many um um in your face obvious details um that you need mm -hmm. to know like that are keys to understanding what what the hell's going on <laughs> or what you think are or what you think is going on but not quite like that um and i i like i love that i love those aspects of that no oh, puppy <laughs> dog was making some noise anyway yeah no this i love this love this film um this is a good call um mm -hmm. uh I go go see this i i disagree with the seven here i think this is more um if you're if you're into this if you're open to this kind of movie this type of, of movie i would say that this is a it's not a seven i'd say it's a good eight yeah. uh, but that's my personal opinion um oh, so I'd that, throw it as seven, eight point five <laughs> yeah yeah i i yeah. the seven kind of it confuses me a little bit but whatever yeah whatever. that's that's probably those that saw the who all's in it and was like oh well this is a keanu reeves movie i'll have to and then they didn't get yeah. what they yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. for sure yeah that's yeah. true yeah if you go in look for john wick it's, it's not not john wick <laughs> sorry no this, is, no this is a very 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 under the radar understated keanu reeves movie um mm -hmm. and i can see like um i i encounter commentary for reading some background things on like so there's this very strong opinions on keanu reeves in this movie you know some say that that's their favorite you know yeah uh, personally yeah. um I, I get that i i can i i can appreciate that uh for me that's not for me but um mm -hmm. you know i think i think keanu reeves is a different aspect uh he definitely has talent for sure but <laughs> i have other yeah. favorite more favorite keanu reeves movies for different reasons but that's that's a different scale of appreciation yeah, yeah and i did watch um on i watched it on blu-ray and there was like a um 20 minute um documentary uh that oh. focused mainly on the, the animation uh, so a lot of the things I've said about the animation is is from that, and it was very interesting uh, to see see how they worked and uh, put everything together. And um, they had like a um, uh, say a uh, um, a sheet with the how how the template for how how to do Keanu, how to do Robert Downey Jr. And um, they cool. had yeah they had teams uh, work on particular scenes. Um, the ones that were really good at Dean Keanu, Robert, Downey, and uh, Woody. Uh, they they focused in on those those scenes that were just just them, and um, and then like when there's a couple of scenes where all the actors are together and they bring all of them in together. But um, they said the the hardest the hardest thing to do was uh, to get um, uh, Keanu Reeves' scruffy beard down right. Um, that took huh. a little while to. to fine tune how much uh scruff and how much you know patchiness that it that it needed uh to really come across <laughs> well yeah that's funny that's funny yeah encounter reads has just grown in popularity too like this mythical mm -hmm. legendary figure on the internet and like i guess a joke would be something along the lines of like he's uh he is reddit's boyfriend essentially like he <laughs> <laughs> or facebook's boy you know like like he is just the uh the this this wonderful sweet a uh, person who never, never ever got involved in in anything, um, even resembling something that would be questionable. You know, so it's very wholesome mm -hmm. and beloved. It's very rare. <laughs> yeah, I would say in in today's Hollywood. But so he's so mm -hmm. enduring as a character because it's so genuine, and he mm -hmm. just does a damn good job. Um, yeah, you know, not notwithstanding, that doesn't mean that every Keanu Reeves movie is a is a banger because they're not. Uh, <laughs> no. But. Uh, this one and this one certainly I would not call a banger, um, but it is definitely that's not that kind of movie like you were saying. It's not like a, 
you show up and you're expecting a action something or other or whatever or otherwise mm-hmm. and it's just not that movie at all it's mm-hmm. not no. As a matter of fact um the fact that, that they have so many high class actors and actresses in this movie that that fact alone and the fact that their faces are obscured um mm-hmm. in, in in this manner um is a testament to, to their craft that they yeah. take it seriously that there's yeah. um like i said i mentioned uh judge dread and uh, salone was famously saying like i'm not wearing a helmet like uh that's mm-hmm. that that was like part of the character of judge dread is he always wears the helmet whatever he's like i'm not doing that because uh, he wants to see his face because he's yeah. sylvester stallone and, okay. you know that's yeah. not like so all these kudos to the to all of these guys mm-hmm. for letting their guard down and like letting the art um, yeah. dictate what and how it goes like that that alone yeah. you yeah. never freaking see nowadays at all not at all mm-hmm. uh, it's mm-hmm. very rare yeah and from, from what i read um you know most of them kind of uh hung on to the the script and kind of treated it at that like the bible but uh the keanu reeves actually took the book and the script and really uh act out of out out of the book he actually went through and took his uh script and found the scenes in the book correlated and tied those mm-hmm. together so that he he would be kind of um you know acting from the book as opposed to to the uh, the script which i found it found interesting um, and i, so I, don't, could... I don't yeah sorry sorry to interrupt go ahead sorry no just just that uh it was interesting that it, that's that's where his his headspace was at that uh he was wanting to uh, respect the the book in in that regard. Oh yeah, he he did he 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 knows what he's doing, and uh, we love it when he does you know does it right uh, as it were. But yeah, I can't remember that. I found an article that was pretty lengthy that was kind of it went it was more longer form that kind of talked about this. It mentioned mm-hmm. this one, and it mentioned Phil K. It was mainly about Phil K. Dick's life mm-hmm. and how he kind of did this and how he did that, and a lot of these things were ripped directly from that from his life that he wrote it's, about almost self autobiographical uh for different aspects obviously there's yeah. a sci-fi component here but um right. yeah from what is oh. yeah from what his daughter said it was his most personal work so mm-hmm. yeah that that makes sense and, and it made sense that they 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 wanted to treat it with as much respect as they could and, and make sure that uh the team working on this movie was treating it w- with that respect and I, I think they pulled it off yeah there there, there is way and, and and i think it just all goes into kind of display the humanity of the whole damn mm-hmm. thing um mm-hmm. and there's this 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 sh- veneer or the sheen of of sadness you know kind of layered on top of all of this like that's just kind of there um there's other aspects too but it's just kind of like damn <laughs> <laughs> this is like it, it it definitely takes you to places for sure um and then it's mm-hmm. unafraid uh and it does it in its own way uh and and mm-hmm. and, and and we all love it for it <laughs> all the more. yeah so yeah it's um it's yeah it's tempting to say that uh, a movie like this couldn't be made today but um it would be you'd be hard pressed to say that that this movie could have been made back in 2006 it really t- took uh, someone with a vision like R- Richard Linklater and mm. uh, a studio willing to take a chance. Uh, this is one of those rare movies that are very mm-hmm. unique to itself. And uh, we're, we're very lucky, lucky to have something like this. And uh, it's one of those movies we should cherish and uh, enjoy. And uh, I guess you could guess I'm giving this a thumbs up. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Same here. Um, and I think I, this kind of vaguely reminds me of a YouTube clip I saw, like where it was like, some pretty famous actor um i think it was matt damon um i don't remember if matt i see it all, damon. All... Yeah, matt, matt damon matt damon yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and uh and a little funny side note like there's a another article that i read that was like uh like they they totaled up the fictional cost to go save matt damon uh mm. in, in all his films and it was like something mm. well over something ridiculous so it was kind of funny but anyway mm. he, he said um you know about and I can't remember what particular movie he was talking about, but he was talking about how difficult it is for for you to come up with a movie of even just a modest budget, um, say twenty five million. He was using that, and then he goes, then you have to have twenty five million uh, also to promote the movie, 
So that's mm-hmm. you're already at 50 million. And then when you get to that point, um, you you if you don't make back, there's some other things that you had you added on. It's essentially like so unless you come in and you you're already behind the curve. So unless your money, you make your money back um, 100 million or, or more, you know, for it to be a success or a hit or whatever, um, you know, that that's tremendous risk um, associated with making movies, because at the end of the day, nobody really knows if it's going to stick or land or not. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that we have kind of like the thing that I would say that sucks about our media landscape in general, if I could wax poetic a little bit is that um, I think that there's just so much money tied in. And this is a, uh, this is an unoriginal observation from my end, but I think it's really true nowadays. Like there's just so much money um, tied into this. And it's not just that one industry anymore. It's other companies owning and making content that we never would have thought, you know, 20, 30, 40 years ago, if somebody would have told you that, you know, Walmart, uh, would have bought uh, a, a whatever or a, you know, Apple or whatever, you would have looked at them like they had three three eyes or something, you know, like mm-hmm. that. That that's just like this kind of conveyor belt of being fed entertainment, um, mm-hmm. and and sometimes it works. Um, for the most part, it it works, um, but mm, boy, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, and we'll get into mm-hmm. that a little bit. Um, we're on the precipice of finding that out in our in our uh, weekly our grab bag, and I look forward to that. But yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Kind of wrapping it up here. Um, mm-hmm. Go see this. Um, if you are mm-hmm. even remotely attracted to mm-hmm. offbeat um, noir type mm-hmm. things, like, uh, and I mentioned this repeatedly, this is one of my mm-hmm. personal favorites. It's True Detective. Um, mm-hmm. You will absolutely, uh, you'll, you'll, that'll be in waters that you love to swim in, uh, so to speak. Yep. Um, yeah. As uh, they famously say, run, don't walk to your local streaming service <laughs> to, <laughs> to see this movie <laughs> right, or uh right. or your um local online store to buy the uh the blu-ray or i don't think in 4k um but the blu-ray look looks uh very good i uh yeah that would be really cool watch. if they made a, a more upscale version um that would be very interesting of course mm-hmm. i don't I always shy away from that because it's a money pit and I've been there and I've done that before. And mm-hmm. uh, I, 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 I've had my heart broken many times for technology and it is what it is, but mm-hmm. that's me personally, but. Um, yep. And it's um, also, um, uh, it's not a huge time investment. It's an hour and 40 minutes. It, it gets in, it gets out, uh, gives you the message and uh, gives you, uh, I, I, I hazard to guess that uh, it, it'll give you more, more thought, uh, thinking about the movie and that, that mm-hmm. actual oh, length yeah. of the movie, uh, your yep. your and your thoughts are going to return to it uh, for the next few days after after seeing it. Yep, and I and I plan on jumping right in that book um, right mm-hmm. um, this week too. I'm gonna I probably will follow up um, later on. Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe not. Whatever. Um, if there's anything other thing to say or that I'm struck with, um, but just very interesting. Um, mm-hmm. Where where you have these these this, these concepts that are distilled and then it weaves together this this just really good story. Mm-hmm. Um, yep, it's just yep. really really good. Um, but that's yep. of course what a great story is too. Mm-hmm. But uh, with that being said, I think we've kind of bagged up everything and and we've kind of mm-hmm. um, done our done our, our deed. But yeah, definitely a big strong recommend on mm-hmm. from both of us. Um, yep. and look forward yep. to uh, seeing more movies like this <laughs> um, yeah yeah sci-fi is definitely not dead <laughs> oh god no 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 sci-fi is amazingly deep and wide and and mm-hmm. like i said this technology and all that doesn't have it doesn't matter that doesn't matter at all uh that's mm-hmm. why you know certain things work better than others you know mm-hmm. uh, like kind of like star wars um or dune or you know whatever um mm-hmm. yeah, somebody could maybe be prickly and argue with me on star wars but for the most part you know, you have these concepts that are tropes um, that are done perfectly, <laughs> you know, for the most part. <laughs> right. Yep. Cool, cool. Yeah, right, and, well, and, yeah, and even if um, you're just into animation, this is a great mm-hmm. movie for, for solely just uh, studying the animation aspect of it. But yeah, Absolutely. yep. Uh, but yeah, uh, this is the first, the last, the nerdum. And uh, I'm Thomas. I'm with uh, Mike here. And we'll see you out in the uh, scanners. <laughs> We'll be keeping an eye on you. <laughs> <laughs> <A new path. laughs>